if self-driving cars are pervasive, a huge percentage of the American population right now makes its living, and oftentimes a pretty good living, driving. And so understandably, people are going to be concerned about what does this mean. About three and a half million Americans work in trucking. It's one of the last well-paying job markets still available to people without a college education. But self-driving technology could replace some of those workers, and it could happen soon. The ride-sharing giant Uber just bought a company called Auto. Its product? Trucks that drive themselves. Ravi Samaya went for a ride in one. We hear a lot about self-driving cars, but many people think self-driving trucks, like this one from Otto, will hit harder and sooner. They never speed or change lanes suddenly, and they can drive forever without getting tired, so they promise to be cheaper and more efficient. And the company just made its first actual delivery, 120 miles with nobody driving, here in Denver. First and foremost, trucks are almost sort of the backbone of the US economy. Everything around us, maybe beside us, was on a truck at some point. Uh, just the magnitude of that traffic is immense. We have millions of those trucks on the road. As a complete amateur in these things, this seems very hard. Is it hard to make a truck drive itself? Uh, it's hard, but it's totally doable. Highways by nature is a simpler problem to solve. There's no, or hopefully no pedestrians. Uh, there's no stoplights. It's easier to basically uh, automate or have a self-driving vehicle on the highway most of the day. The truck uses a variety of sensors, which feeds a stack of computers in the cab. It reads the road to decide when to accelerate, steer, or hit the brakes. The company says it's likely much safer than a human driver. We went out on a test run with a veteran test driver, Walt, to see how it worked. So Walt, tell me what's going to happen when you go autonomous. And what's the process? The process is right now, Jake is getting the software ready to uh, make sure everything's good to go and it's operating appropriately. And then uh, essentially, I'm checking the traffic to make sure that there's nothing crazy going on behind or to the side of me, just, just in case. And then it's as simple as uh, pressing the button. And once you've engaged that, the sensors on the front of the truck are doing the same job that you would ordinarily be doing. They're keeping an eye on the road, they're making sure the truck is going the right speed, they're braking for any obstacles, all that kind of stuff. Correct. So you've been replaced by, you know, three LiDARs, a GPS, a camera, and a radar. Correct. <laughs> That's how big you feel. It feels great, because <laughs> then I'll be able to go on a hike later. How are we doing, Jake? Ready to go? You good. There we go. And we're engaged. Wow. And you can get out to the seat now? Uh, I can get out of the seat right now. All right. One second. Straighten out a little bit. All right. Because we're all tight here. Yeah. All right. So we're now in a truck with no driver whatsoever. The truck seems pretty comfortable, except I don't think it understands that the seat belt is off because no one's in the seat. Otto says it's still testing the trucks, but eventually it will sell a kit for tens of thousands of dollars to make nearly any truck self-driving. Virtually every truck manufacturer is also testing self-driving technology. Morgan Stanley estimates that self-driving trucks could save the industry $168 billion a year. 70 billion of that would come from labor savings. If you presume this is gonna work the way you think it's gonna work, like what, what does the industry start to look like? I'm pretty bullish on, on the technology. I, I mean, in 20 years, I could see just the trailer.